Hello everybody, and welcome to Aqua's the Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Uh, gonna continue, uh, with doing a whip and chat here. <laughs> I don't think about what I had to say for a minute. Holy cow. And it's like afternoon, I should be awake by now. Anyways, uh, just chilling here with a cup of coffee. And we're gonna work on... Diamond Art Clubs on Golden Shores by Chuck Pinson. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Nice, pretty sunset painting. <laughs> uh, diamond shape square, uh, 29.1 inches by 21.6 inches, 74 centimeters by 55 centimeters. Uh, 48 colors and three ABs. It is an absolutely beautiful day here, and I'm seeing a couple Canada geese out on the pond that we have on our property. Yay, nature screensaver stuff is starting up again. All right, love spring, or signs of it coming. Uh, the vast majority of the snow on our lawn is gone, so... Yeah, I have a feeling it's... It, there might be cold days, but... Uh, yeah. It's pretty much almost going to be a spring here in uh, uh, Canada. Southwestern Ontario. Where I am. Yep. Canada geese are showing me their butts. Great. Good quality time with nature. I'm a cute, serene uh, waterfowl. I'll just show you my butt. Thanks for looking. Hooray. Alright, 3861, and this is percent sign. Yeah, I have a few days off now, because I worked for a couple days, and now I have the weekend off, so... I can probably make some progress on this canvas, finally. I'm really loving the bottom right corner. This is just a beautiful canvas. I just love this bottom right hand corner. <laughs> Holy cow. Just times that you just want to sit down and diamond paint, but can't. <clears throat> times where I want to sit down and record, but can't have to go to work or have to do stuff but I shall spend some time with everybody now so get out any uh, craft that you're working on or if you're just chilling feel free to hang out for a bit and we'll just talk about random stuff I'm sure I'll try to fill the hour <laughs> Ah, oh, so nice to be able to sit down and diamond paint. Yay. 3861, just double. Yep, percentage. Okay. Yeah, to be fair, this is a big section that I swathed off here, so. But, yeah. I have to work my hours, and they're 12 hour shifts, so. Which I don't have a problem with. <laughs> Let's work a few times each week. Kind of go through the days and then yeah, have a few days off and then go back. It's all good. It's much better than what I was doing. So Awesome. Yeah, nice blue sky, the sun's out, canned geese are hanging out, almost all the snow is gone. And it was busy in town today when I ran a couple of errands earlier. Shortly after I had lunch. Weird. Just, uh, I don't like it when it's too busy downtown. Yeah, I just live a few minutes outside St. Mary's, Ontario. Yeah, I'm just on the highway outside of town. 
So, yeah, it's just like a five minute drive into town. And I'm the kind of person who just uh, knows what I'm looking for, knows what I'm like doing for my errands, and just go and do them, and then come back home. <laughs> I really don't like uh, going out just for the giggles. <laughs> I get what I need to get done and then head back. Yeah, got to minimize my exposure. I am in the food industry, so I just got to be careful what I'm doing. Can't be too crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think last time I was like talking about how safety conscious... Uh, my new employer is and how easy they are to work with and all that yeah I find that to be very important and I have to adjust some of my habits because <laughs> I was so used to uh, wearing my work boots back and forth uh, at my previous employer and you're technically not supposed to be a uh, Wearing your work boots outside the plant, and guess what I did? <laughs> I accidentally uh, put my work boots back on and left the plant. So I'm just going to have to re-clean my work boots before I go back on Monday. And yeah, no big deal. It's just, yeah, just got to get into the habit of having getting into another pair of shoes going to and from work it after 16 years at one place and just doing the same thing like it's just so secondary cheer it's just something i'm gonna have to adjust accordingly to yeah it's just a habit change that's all i'll take a couple weeks You have to like visually remind myself or something or put a note in my locker. Hey, change your shoes before you leave or something. Yeah, I didn't even realize it until like this morning when I was uh, putting my shoes on. It's like, those are my work boots. Ah, oh. <laughs> I forgot to switch them out. And my sneakers were like right on the my running shoes that I usually put on were like in the bottom of my locker. I was probably like looking right at them as I was changing to. Uh, then just la di da, just left. Ah, <laughs> uh, bummer. <laughs> oh, what can you do? All you can do is just correct your action as soon as you. Once you realize where you been screwing up. Yeah, oh, live you learn. Yeah, it's just that uh the work environment is very sensitive to bacteria. Like uh any outside contamination. It's just a very sensitive work environment and yeah. They do a good job to prevent cross-contamination from the outside coming into the plant. So, yeah, I, I got to respect that. So, <laughs> yeah, well, mistakes happen. And I had to get a new lock as well because, uh, lo and behold, I locked my <laughs> keys and wallet on my locker when I went for break and I couldn't get back into the plant, so I had to radio a co-worker to let me back in last week. Oh, thank goodness for walkie-talkies in there. <laughs> for radio. So, basically a two-day-old lock that I had just bought, sawed into, or for me to get back to work. Uh, it's like, <laughs> kind of stuff happens to the best of us, I guess. A couple funny wonky things happen.
And I don't know if anybody like wears scrubs, if like medical kind of scrubs. I don't know, they're just blue uniforms that I wear for the moment. They're just kind of like wearing track pants and <laughs> it's a really loose, thin fabric shirt that I have to change in and out of throughout the day. Yeah, <laughs> trying to clip a radio onto your waist with those kind of really loose track style pants or scrubs it doesn't work very good <laughs> pants were falling down all day it's just yeah. uh, so I tried to tie some twine around my waist to like keep them up but yeah I just pitch that pair in the laundry and just change so it's like I just could not walk around without oh, my pants falling out all day <laughs> oh man hilarious stuff like there's no bell loops or anything it's just literally a pair of track pants oh, that I have to wear I don't know they're they're improving their uniform program, so the medical scrubs are just going to have to stick around until, yeah. I'm in food. I'm not medical, but it's just what the uniforms are right now. <sighs> Basically, medical scrubs. Yeah, there are drawstrings to tighten up the pants, but yeah, apparently the drawstring in that is just dangling there without any major roll probably uh disintegrated <laughs> the drawstring probably disintegrated as it kept getting washed and it's gonna take a swig of coffee here there we go it's getting cold and cold coffee is not very much fun <laughs> Oh, here we go. But yeah, I get a much com much more comfortable uh, at my new job now. I'm seeing some routines developing. Yeah, getting used to doing the paperwork and boxing off the product. Just haven't really done any uh, full product changeovers or line shutdowns. That's kind of the more technical aspect of the job. But when I'm there and the line's running, like, yeah, production just runs. And then once the order is fulfilled or, yeah, oh, excuse me, once the order is fulfilled, then the line then shuts down and yeah you clean it but to switch over to the next product but yeah there are days where i'm just uh doing line checks and uh yeah tidying up uh the place or helping with uh shipping orders and all that so that's kind of new too uh skid wrapping and all that yeah I don't operate the forklifts that's there because I'm not certified but there's an electric uh, skid lift that you just have to be competent to use so they're like you don't need a license for this but don't touch the forklift if you're not certified so which I understood I told them I had never taken forklift so there you go. It it's pretty cramped in the first place. I I could learn how to do. I could be taught forklift, but I think I'm a little more comfortable with the electric lift. Ah, I don't know. It's just one of those things to learn with that job 
And you just have to be careful and observant of your environment while you're working, of course, because it is tight quarters and there's uh, various things going on all at once. So, yeah, no big deal. Just adjust accordingly, really. Ah, no, I'm sticking to the canvas. Jeez. This is why I like having doing a certain section and then my hands can rest somewhere. Because now yeah, I have that habit of uh, resting my hands on the canvas. Yeah, once it's done. Yeah. It's kind of why I go from right to left or. Yeah, bottom to top. I don't know. Everybody's different, but. You do what works for you for sure. Yeah, you'll as you do more canvases, you just get used to what you're comfortable with. I was just seeing uh gel pads like while you're diamond painting. There's like I just literally seen a post before I like came on here to record this whip and chat, like gel pads and they stick to your uh, drafting table or workspace like a flat surface I guess and my uh, drafting table is slightly tilted here and she and in the picture there was there was like a container of wax that uh they had sitting on this gel pad and the surface was slightly tilted so yeah those would probably be Very handy to have. Yeah, you can set... Yeah, diamond painting trays on there too. Yeah, it's just like a sticky... Rectangular surface. That's all it is. Yeah, and it just keeps everything in place. And, uh... Yeah, I wouldn't have to hold, uh... This diamond painting tray the way I am right now, but... Yeah, this is a fairly, this canvas takes a lot of the work surface that I have here. I'd almost have to sneak a... Yeah, I'd have to move this canvas over a bit or something. Yeah, but... Oh, something to consider, but yeah, I'm fairly conscious of... Uh, where my diamond painting tray is and for the moment but yeah that's not a bad idea yeah a sticky mat or whatever yeah <laughs> they said it was a game changer yeah it certainly does look uh very handy uh my wax i usually just uh cap off in a separate storage container anyway so yeah this is a wax storage container that i got off of etsy a long time ago yep this cap comes off and i just have a i'm a pink wax guy so yeah i just have some pink wax in here the lid lifts off and yeah so i got it a while ago so just saves your wax from drying out. So. It's all good. I'd probably try like other waxes, but yeah, just not right now. Man, I'd consider getting a fancy pen as well. Like I'm not totally ignoring or disregarding the idea completely. Yeah, I just can't do it right now. <laughs> Get a pen with like a cardinal on the top or something. This, I am kind of thinking of a channel logo. Yeah, a logo to put up on uh, my YouTube page here. Kind of on that top bar. 
Yeah, because my channel is really Echoes of Color, but since uh, my YouTube is kind of tied to my Gmail, I had to change it back to uh, my full name. But yeah, my channel is called Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison, but or Echoes of Color. To... <laughs> Yeah, it was just going to affect how uh, emails went out, like, important messages to people might have just ended up in uh, junk mail bins. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to need more uh, percent drills. Yeah, at least I got uh, some ABs in this uh, corner up here. Yeah, just in the sand here. Yeah, number one, there's an AB here. Yeah, 129. Yep, just some ABs in the sand. Yeah, I like that kind of accenting in a canvas. I couldn't imagine doing a full canvas with uh, AB like drills. I'm sure they look awesome, but. I find a I've always seen a B's as a kind of a nice little detail garnish throughout the canvas. Yeah, my got the second a B here, and there's a bit of uh, the third a B. Just a little time glass here is the third a B. Yeah, the third a B is like very minor throughout. The canvas here, yeah, I think it's a, like a, oh, uh, what's the, 136 is a blue, so, yeah, these hourglass icons on the canvas are, yeah, probably going to be very minute, not, I'm not seeing too much, yeah, but they certainly do play a role. In the canvas for sure. Oh, there's a ton over on a boat at the far left end of the canvas. But yeah. I think one and two are the most prominent ABs in on this chuck canvas for sure. Yeah. I had nothing wrong with ABs, it's just it just feels like overkill with the uh, if you have too many ABs in a canvas. I just like the slight detail and glisten. <laughs> oh. No worries. It's all good. I generally just follow the canvas. Like, I really don't... Haven't really looked into, like, special drills or anything at this point. No. Oh. Is that a drill that I'm using right now? I've dropped a couple of this color as it is onto the floor. Yeah, that crazy collision sound. Do do do. Once something hits the floor, and then it's like gone once it hits the floor. I've dropped a couple, I've saved a couple. It's just, ah, it sucks. Once the wax wears out in your pen, in your tip, it's just, you start losing drills. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I've lost a few drills of this color. Yeah, they go on the edge of the canvas here and then drop on the floor. It's like, I cringe every time, literally. Oh no, what if I needed that drill <laughs> for later? <laughs> I hate losing drills like that. When I did pixel art, and there are pieces like this, but like kind of cubed, 
and you're pulling them off the individual like colored pieces like pixels off of this like main frame of the same material and I've flicked pixels all over the place yeah because they're cubed and you literally need like tweezers for that pixel art yeah because you're putting the pixels on individual like you're putting the pixels on base plates but each base plate has a certain number of pins or like uh, miniature poles where you place the specific uh, color to create the picture. Yeah, I talked about it a bit ago, but yeah, small pieces. But yeah, that was kind of the prerequisite that craft that I did before diamond painting so yeah very similar except uh, diamond painting this is like what you're working on uh, the pixel art you had to follow pages numerous pages of pattern sheets and you could kind of say it's like a cross stitch pattern but yeah cross stitch could also have printed uh work like printed canvas as well but yeah this is a lot easier i don't mind pixel art that i did years ago it makes the art is just as beautiful but yeah it's a little more tedious and you have to hold the base plates down with your hand I can use sticky tack to keep the base plates in place, but yeah, then you're messing up the pattern sheets with sticky tack. Yeah, it's just, I just held the base plates down, and if they ever did shift, I had to realign the base plate and just continue going, but yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, just going to stick with diamond painting now and yeah, possibly coloring on here. But yeah, it's mostly going to be diamond painting for the moment. Yeah, because for coloring, I'd probably just sit here and uh, literally color something with <laughs> Crayola or... <laughs> <laughs> Some other pencil grands that are hanging around. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Lunch attacks. Yeah, I really don't have fancy pencil grands. <laughs> It'd be very basic coloring if I ever did any coloring this channel. But it is called Echoes of Color, so it would kind of fit in. Probably do color by number or something. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... Coloring can be very detailed oriented as well. And if you have the right pencil crayons or like markers, etc. Oh man, the realistic effects that you can produce on a coloring sheet are just incredible <laughs> the shadowing of somebody's like facial features oh, it's just it's just amazing watching some uh, YouTube creators color it's love listening to turning on a coloring video and just while I'm doing, while I'm diamond painting or whatever. I, I, I also like the diamond painting videos, don't get me wrong, the whip and chat. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's just soothing. Some of the creators have really soothing voices, so... You just kind of get into a zone 
where you're entertained yet you become more focused I guess yeah it, it's when you're comfortable it's when you're really comfortable and it's just like you're in a groove and you don't know what time it is anymore <laughs> you're just doing it's great yeah, it'd be awesome to have that consistency of attention all the time, but <laughs> yeah, it sometimes doesn't come some days. Okay, try not to go too high over the boundary here. I do kind of have an invisible boundary. I'm probably like right at the top, yeah, of where I diamond paint, at where I am currently in this section to diamond paint, okay, percent right there, cool, alright, and just have a few more of this color and then I just systematically keep filling in the canvas as we go here yeah you probably would never see me with multiple trays that's just oh it's just asking for trouble oh it is doable i believe that but uh not the way my uh not the way this canvas is tilted and I can just as easily create carnage with uh, just tipping this tray that I'm holding <laughs> over. <laughs> Most likely uh, favors the floor or to go down into the crevice where uh, my support bar is on my drafting table here. Yeah, guaranteed, you're sure to, guaranteed while diamond painting, you're sure to spill a tray or lose drills. Yeah, it just seems inevitable and part of the craft. <laughs> yeah. I'm reassured of that every day that I diamond paint. <laughs> and of course, we all have probably posted uh, horror stories of... Uh, Drill spilling or containers splitting open. Oh man. People knocking their kits onto the floor. Oh, it's just nightmare fuel. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Just having a nightmare about a picture you've seen on social media of uh, somebody's case of drills spilled all over the floor onto a carpet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh no. Hopefully not my kid. It better not be my kid. Oh, just a dream. <laughs> it's like... Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, that is terrible. Oh, just start sweating or just breathing heavily just looking at those posts all the time. It's just like something you really don't want to be looking at, but... You look at it anyway, it's like, oh. <laughs> eh, kind of like me watching the news. I really don't want to be watching it, but to stay updated on what's going on, I watch a news cycle. It's like, okay, I think I'm caught up. Time to do something else now. We're good. Like, yeah. It's what's happening in the world, and if you don't want to be entangled in that, that that's fine. Like, current events, yeah, it's not for everybody, but as long as you have, like, enough knowledge or information that you're comfortable with having or hearing, yeah, that's all good. As long as you're in the know or updated somehow uh, to what's going on regarding current events in the news or whatever, 
yeah, just do what you're comfortable with. Yeah, I'm not here about yeah what the pandemic's doing and car accidents and yeah, it's just just the everyday churn of daily life around here. And of course, we get like a tr city of Toronto. It's like two hours away from where I am. And yeah, we watch that news. And then, yeah, CP24 and then uh, CNN or MSNBC for US news. And there's like different hours where people are hosting and they're still just doing uh, US current events like what the president of the United States is doing or how what, how COVID's affecting everybody in the states yeah so I stay updated with uh, CNN and uh, MSNBC news feeds we watch it like every day for a few hours in the evenings yeah then we switch to Coordination Street or whatever for half an hour, and then, yeah. <laughs> All right, what symbol can I do now? Okay, I think I'll go to this uh, kind of right facing, yeah, 3864. Oops. It's basically the second last color listed on the, well, it's the last color that's regular in the canvas. Yeah, 48's the 30 AB in this canvas. Nice light brown or creamy white. 3864. Okay. Do do do. Oh, cat hair. Cat hair on my diamond painting tray. How cute. There's cat hair. No, it's better than on the canvas. Oh, jeez. Less surgery to get this off. Extract the hair. Oh, my kittens. <laughs> Where's it? my hair? I can't tell. Cat hair, my hair. It's just all the same. Uh, my hair. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, no earthquake. I'm just hitting my bracket here. Ah, stabbing myself with the toothpick now. They used to pull the pink wax out of the tip of my applicator pen here. Yeah, if you're taking wax out of your diamond painting pen, like the tip here. Yeah, they suggest using a toothpick so you don't, like, bend your uh, applicator tip. I don't know, I learned that a chunk ago, but... I'm sure everybody's aware of it, but... No, just what I learned. Yeah, I know, my uh, hardcore pink pen. With elastic on it for a holder. I know, it, it's so fancy, I know. But it just wants one. <laughs> Get an acrylic one. Okay. Are you are you buying? <laughs> I'll get one eventually. It's just I have more pink pens handy. Like they just come with the kit, so it's like okay. I can just diamond paint now. Hooray. <laughs> Just so, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, if I were to get a fancy diamond painting pen, I'd probably be like red or something, or red or green or blue. So fancy. Or get one that looks like fire. That'd be cool, too. Or just get four different ones. <laughs> when you only need one. I'm, I'm, I'm a single placer anyway. I don't want to, like, a 50 tip or be placing, like, 20 drills down at once with this really fancy pen. Nah. Just give me a single placer end. Just, yeah. Just let me diamond paint, man. I just want a diamond paint. <laughs> Don't need a super hardcore pen to be able to get stuff done, but hey, if the option's there, which it is, to get a fancy diamond painting pen, go for it. No worries here. Just, yeah. Pens being handcrafted is certainly a more commonplace. I'm seeing more and more posts or people selling their uh, pens and their stashes to, or they make their own pens or whatever. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, ah, I'm being finicky with my squares. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Ah. Boop. Yeah, it's all good. Ah, it's just nice to be sitting here in diamond painting. It's great. Ooh. Just love it. Able to sit down here and record a whip and chat and slam some drills onto this beautiful epic canvas. Yee. Yeah, still love seeing the Chuck Long 3 canvases, and of course everybody else's canvases whipped. Yeah, it's great to be seeing that on social media for sure. Love it. Then it's almost like you're being enabled to purchase the canvases that everybody else is working on. <laughs> It's like, that canvas looks like a lot more fun than the one I'm working on right now, but... <laughs> uh, it happens to the best of us, does it not? Ooh, look at my pretty canvas, and everybody's like, Ooh, where'd you get that? Ooh. <laughs> Sparkly. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> and then it's a like canvas that's like, always sold out or very hard to get sells out quick it's like ah <laughs> ooh sparkly canvas oh man yeah just love seeing the chucks that are in progress oh and some of them are just seeing them finish it's like wow this is beautiful. I think a moment on memory lane is like a an autumn scene of like a residential street in the middle of the fall. It's like, wow. That looks awesome when it's done. <laughs> I think I have that one too. I have a few chucks, but not all of them. But now it makes me want to find all the chuck canvases that I can. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, I can't be doing like chuck pens and canvases all the time either. Like I have to like other artists and try other diamond painting companies, but yeah. Bummer. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just going to be on Golden Shores here. And then going to probably slide into uh, IM. Uh, 
another diamond art club canvas for sure of a dragon I don't know, I like my dragons, I like my fantasy stuff. Then hopefully I can uh, try a different, or do a di another canvas from a different company. Yeah, just take a break from uh, Diamond Art Club for a canvas for a bit there. Yeah, but that's further down the line. Yeah, it's not like I'm going to have this done in like a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to rush through this just for the sake of just doing another canvas. As I don't have a drafting table anywhere else. It's just here. This is my only workstation. so Which is good. So, oh. I know where everything is, and yeah. and my cat can't get do too much to this adhesive or damage or spill drills everywhere. Yeah, there's gonna be cat hair on my canvas occasionally because it carries from my t-shirt or my clothing onto. Yeah, I'll get the cat hair, but it's just not gonna be like a cat on the on my canvas. <laughs> oh man, cause my cat likes shedding, so puff. You can see the hairs falling off. The or see the hairs on my cat's body. That have like shed. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. in our little robotic vacuum. I'm sure just loves having a hairball like every half hour or so that the canister fills up in the vacuum there. Robotic vacuum. Yeah, one of my dad's uh, little toys. <laughs> But yeah, it just goes over the floors in the main house. Kind of ro robotic vacuum or whatever. <laughs> and he control he can control it via his cell phone. It's like, what is it on your cell phone these days? And it's just, oh, there's an app for that. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, gotta love when the vacuum gets stuck on like a floor mat. It's like, okay. <laughs> if this vacuum was the Mars rover, it, we really, I don't think it even had made it to Mars. With the amount of time they get stuck. <laughs> even the moon for granted a lot if it even tried to get there. <laughs> Error. Doo doo. <laughs> hey, seriously, it's a floor mat. Yeah, nice little silly transport truck past my making the noise. I love the voice that comes out of the vacuum. It's just so calm, <laughs> neutral. Doo doo, error. <laughs> it's like, okay. It could be on fire and it would just be like, oh, it's warm in here. Ouch. <laughs> or something. <laughs> feel like everything's fine. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> The house is on fire, but okay. Sure. Take your word for it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great.
when tech technology is calm during a earth shattering a situation <laughs> I would probably say slight temperature elevation detected in your house. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a burning inferno in here, you know. Uh. <laughs> I'll be like, please apply sunscreen or something. <laughs> if it were any type of a uh, Automated talking device, <laughs> other than a robotic vacuum. Same. No, no, we have like an upright vacuum anyway. I like we have a upright canister vacuum that we also use. But yeah, we run the robotic vacuum every week, just on the floors of the house because we have cork floors. So. Oh, the vacuum just has a good time dusting, uh, getting hairballs off the floor, going under the couches, <laughs> bumping into the walls every now and then. <laughs> Goosh. Oh, okay, can't go that far, so turns around. <laughs> Goosh. <laughs> Stuck on a rug. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Error. <laughs> okay. Here it is, like, if you're not babysitting the vacuum, it's sitting there for, like, 20 minutes. The battery is just, like, dying. And it just it's stuck. <laughs> yeah, once the battery gets low enough, it the home icon flashes on the top of the vacuum and it goes back to its uh, charge base. Man, it just knows too much. It's plotting... Evil robotic vacuum is plotting something. Can't say our toaster is plotting anything because I don't. We have a toaster, but I think it's unplugged in in a cupboard, so don't really have a uh, loaves of bread hanging around anymore. Used to eat bread like nothing, but I just switched to wraps. So, yeah. They don't spoil, like, once air gets in onto the bread. You don't have that instant high moisture getting onto the bread, and then the bread spoils. Yeah, because uh, one of our counters in the kitchen gets a lot of sunlight, so, yeah, heat and excess moisture creates a bacteria environment. So, yeah, tortillas just seem to stand a little better. Yeah, it's weird, but yeah. I guess bread's more of a spongy type food product thing. And tortillas are just basically uh, bread pancakes. <laughs> They have pliability, but they're a little, they're not sponges. <laughs> I don't know, man, it's just, they probably retain less moisture, I guess, tortillas than uh, regular bread would, so. No, it's all good. As long as you're getting fiber and you won't have issues getting the nutrition and vitamins that you need. However you get your nutrition and vitamins. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it's like 54. Oh, a quick hour. I was tempted to bring that 
new Nick Jonas CD out and listen to it. <laughs> uh, Spaceman. <laughs> yeah, it just came out recently. Yeah, it's new CD. Yeah, I still buy CD. Yeah, uh, Justin Bieber's uh, Justice CD came out too. I ordered that as well, or pre-ordered it. So that should be coming eventually. Yeah, I think Justin Bieber said uh, to Sean Mendez or mentioned it on social media. Sean Mendez, if Sean Mendez got new material, uh, there'd be uh, quite a few Canadian. Uh, mu music artists in like the top 100 billboard music charts or something. Yeah, because I think The Weeknd's uh, doing pretty well. Yeah, he's a Toronto, city of Toronto native, Mississauga, I guess. Yeah, The Weeknd, yeah. Justin Bieber probably lives in the States, but he was born in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, so... I don't know him personally, but that's where I was born as well, Stratford, Ontario, Canada, so. Yeah, I'm like, I, there could have been a time where I'd probably seen him, but didn't realize. But I was really young back then, so I probably didn't know any better. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a music fanatic but i do have favorite artists of course but yeah i'm not just gonna go building a worship altar for one artist like there's way more out there than <laughs> just one artist because eventually you just hear after hearing like the same artist on the radio all the time or the same song that the artist has released recently it just becomes another thing it just comes an everyday thing yep it was great the first uh, 20 times but now it's just the radio stations just play the crap out of <laughs> really popular songs <laughs> Well, if you haven't heard this uh, for at least once today, you'll probably hear it a dozen or so times today. So here's time number 18 or something. And I guess you can call into some radio stations up here and like uh, request music or something for some uh, segments of time throughout the day but uh, that's not me and when I do get a CD I listen to the whole thing like that CD's in there and I listen to the whole thing I don't skip tracks or anything yeah cause an artist is a uh, music artist shouldn't be defined by their hit single that comes out for their new material or sometimes yeah yeah it's usually a single off their most recent CD or album is playing on the airwaves for weeks before a full album comes out usually how they do it yeah, and then you yeah, hear it on the actual fully newly released album. You're like, yep, been there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just love taking the cellophane off like a brand new CD, slamming it into my car's CD player and just listening. It's like, I've never heard this track before and I'm experiencing it for the first time. <laughs> then if there's like a booklet or whatever, I kind of look at that once and then uh, just put it back in the CD case. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, it's really nice. Nice to see new music, even if uh, COVID-19 has uh, made it difficult for artists to record, but I... Any artist could, like, easily probably record remotely, like, what mu music art artist isn't inspired in the middle of the night at their place of residence and doesn't have recording equipment around these days? Like, I don't know, it... Yeah, music artists could have their own lives too, so it's not like they want to be in the studio all the time too, like Justin Bieber just got married all that recently, so but he's quite active on uh, Instagram, so uh, I'm not going to fangirl about Justin Bieber, it's just <laughs> Yeah, he's just on the radar right now because he's just been very active on Instagram that I've seen, probably on Facebook too, but yeah. I don't like go looking at updates about an artist like on purpose. It's just, it's what I see on Instagram when I'm on there or Facebook. It's like, yeah, it's just an effective way to, for an artist to advertise new material, just like slam up a very brief video on Instagram, and there you go, like how many thousands of people see that video on their feeds every day. It's just, yeah, really clever marketing, advertising campaign. I don't find it annoying, but <laughs> there are probably some people that don't like certain artists, and yeah. but you can choose to follow the artist in an Instagram feed or not, and then you don't get that those updates. But I follow Justin Bieber, so <laughs> yeah, because he posts pictures of his wife and his. Uh, entourage for in the recording in his recording studio or the recording studio that he uses so yeah <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent cultured in some things but yeah all right and slightly over the hour so uh I've been, uh, you've been watching uh, Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. I will put my Facebook page, Instagram, and email down in the description below. But as I always usually do. But other than that, have a great day, everybody. Uh, stay safe. And uh, enjoy uh, doing your whatever craft you're working on. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, and I'll uh, see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Take care.